What a beautiful afternoon it is here at the homestead. Uh, welcome to the Max Happy Homestead. My name is Colby. Um, you'll see Misty in just a second. She's gonna be planting some broccoli, get some things done for us as we get ready for fall and winter. <music> gotten back home and we have this is all blocks of broccoli hold on Sayla so you can see some of these probably look like the water held better than others these up here in the front some they're just not gonna make it but like this one is absolutely beautiful you can see the baby roots coming so we're gonna go ahead and get these in the ground um, it has started to cool off here in the south, and we're still going to have some warm days, but it's ah, you got to be gentle. Um, but it's not going to be like it is in the summer for sure. So we're going to go ahead and get these in the ground. Um, see if we can't get some. This is all broccoli. I have an event this afternoon. Colby's going to get the rest of our lettuces and stuff done this afternoon while I'm gone. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and try to get all the broccoli in. Maybe some of the cabbage in over here and see if we can get some fall and winter stuff growing. I tell you, since we've been back from the Homestead Conference, uh, the, uh, the HOA, we have had absolutely gorgeous weather. We've went from having 40s and 50s, uh, or having 40s and 50s now, in the evenings and 60s during the day. Like right now, it's about 55 to 60 out here. Um, compared to having 90 so man awesome is that uh, we were about 95 just a few days ago so we are very pleased with that what we're doing is we're going to actually uncover part of the silage tarps because we're going to get some things planted uh, as you can see we're going to do a little walk around and show you some things on the the garden front uh, you know our goal is to, to, to garden basically 12 months out of a year and we do that using our greenhouse and things like that. But here's my fall peas. Look how great those, those look. These are pink eye purple hull. We should be able to harvest those prior to any major coldness, but they are doing great. Forecast showing we have two weeks of about 70s during the high and 50s during the low, which means it's time to get our mustard greens and cabbage and broccoli and all those things in the ground so we've got the seedlings misty's gonna start on those in the raised bed i'll finish up with the lettuce and then from there we're gonna go ahead and get the turnips and mustards planted here uh, under the silage tarp so we're going right next to the peas we've opened up three more rows took the silage tarp back pulled it back these have been covered for about uh i'd probably say eight weeks nine weeks ten weeks somewhere on there eight to ten weeks but look how good they look. They're so moist when you walk on it. It's got some old hay, some old, this is where some of our um, things like squash and some of that stuff was planted. So basically, we've got a lot of that old compost that was here and it has absolutely made gorgeous soil. No grass whatsoever. Look at this definitive line here. Just beautiful, beautiful quality gardening. If you're not using silage tarps, I do recommend them they're awesome so we've got this ready to go we'll go and get some some mustard greens and also some some collard greens planted uh for the winter for the fall they'll pretty much last year we had them all year round that time so let's get this planted first then we'll go to the raised hugo culture beds get those planted and we'll be ready for fall I'll show you what i'm doing i've just basically raked a path all the way down each raised bed you see the old compost the old hay i'm just trying to spread it now remember Mustard and collard green seeds are very, very small, very, very finite. So what you want to do is once you go down the row, I'm going to plant them basically two rows all the way down. Both these rows here, same way on that one. Um, you usually just do more of a tossing. You don't cover it up. They, they basically are small enough where they'll go into the soil. Also, we got some rain coming this afternoon, so I don't want to bury them so deep that then, you know, they, they don't grow. They grow better when they're really close to uh, the top. So we're going to go ahead and get those ready. We're going to finish this other row, get those planted. I just can't get over how good these peas look, though. It does need some weeding, so we'll go through and weed some of that. But man, they look great. 
Okay, you see basically how small these seeds are. They're just basically, they remind you of just something very, very, very minuscule. They're not, I mean, they're just so small. They remind you of lettuce or something like that. So we're gonna go and get these planted. Like I said, I'm gonna do two good rows to where they come out really strong and have two good rows on each row. So that gives me six full good rows of greens. Collards are finished. Here you can see me. Collards are finished. You see I'm wearing my flannel today because it's actually cold. I should have a parka on. It's like 50 in Mississippi. Uh, you know, for all the people that watch up north, you're laughing right now. Uh, but we've got this done. We're going to go ahead and get the other rows done. I actually had three. I think I'm going to make another row um, because I like green. So we're going to go and take another row up. That way we'll have plenty enough as we get through winter. are perfect to plant in they're cool and they also have a lot of moisture the salad tarps hold in the moisture you know a lot of people say well you've got the salad tarps on there how's it getting rain well our ground stays wet when it rains so it's, it's on a hill I'm on a slope so when it hits the slope it goes right under there and, and actually the ground underneath is very very moist you can see just looking you can see so many insects uh, all around you can see worm castings you can see worms so it's great to use these salad tarps I can't say enough about them so we're gonna go and rake this other row get these uh, uh, mustard greens is what's left to plant done got these four rows planted there we've got collards in the first two rows mustards in the second it's still doing straight lines I decided to do what they call a scatter so I scattered it basically in two heavy rows on each raised mound uh, they can grow almost like a grass. So basically I got them tight on each other. So I'm hoping to really see some growth in the next few days and weeks to come. So peas are doing great as you saw though. Grass is doing good over there. Let's see. We can't give you some updates. We've got the crazy pigs. George and Pepper, look how big they are. Tell me she's not pregnant. Hey George and Peppa. These peppers, we've gotten tons of these green little chili peppers. And then we have some jalapeno over here. Uh, another form of a pepper there. Doing really good. We've got, uh, let's see, let me show you. Got the pig, I mean the chickens. I don't know if you saw the chickens lately. They're doing great. We've just got the permaculture chickens done. What we're going to do is take the old hens, all the mother hens that are not laying. Some of our barred rock, which is the jailhouse chickens. I'm going to take some of the Jersey Giants, which are some of the older Jersey Giants, the Orpingtons here. Those will go out to the permaculture beds, and they'll start working the garden first, tilling it up. The little chicks will stay in a little encagement until they get pullets. When they get out of the brooder and go to pullet stage, we're going to put them in here where they can learn how to lay, breaking this compost up. And then eventually all these chickens here will be over in the permaculture area in front of old Bessie. We have another part of our garden that we're working with chickens. One part of our garden we're working with silage tarps. And one part of our garden working with cover crop. So again, it's just three different styles of gardening. We're going to see what best fits the Max Happy Homestead. All right. As you see, Misty has got... It's getting late, so I'm work quick. You see, Misty has got the broccoli planted. It's kind of leggy, which I think it's going to be okay. Um, it's warm here, so, you know, it just... It may not be thriving like we want it right now, but I think it's going to be okay. It's, it's a beautiful weather for the next few days, so I think it's gonna be good, good soil. This is our Hugo culture beds. We're gonna go ahead and plant cabbage next to it, go and get some cauliflower in. Then we're gonna plant over here, you see the lettuce and the Swiss chard. This is the lettuce, the Swiss chard, and over there we've got um, a few more greens. We're gonna go get plant some spinach and some things like that. So, give you a quick update, real quick. We've got 
one potato bed starting. Um, you know, we've never done fall potatoes. So we've got about five or six starting to come up. We've got some onions starting to come up, some garlic starting to come up. Look at our asparagus, how crazy it is. It's growing great. Uh, we're in our second year. Look at those asparagus. Bam. We're on our second year of asparagus. They're doing wonderful. Compost, we've got the pile method. It's doing great. This is where we just put our new chicken bedding, turned it. This is our compost here that we've been using in being. So we're taking this apart, flipping over. It's on its third turn already. And look at the volunteer pumpkin growing. Look at that thing, it's huge. Look at the volunteer uh, pumpkin right here. <laughs> we've got some volunteer lettuce coming up, some volunteer radishes coming up. This is the other peppers that are finishing. We've got some. Have you seen that giant one? Yeah, it's beautiful. Look at those bell peppers. Look how pretty they are. And then Harley's talking about this giant bells oh, wow. down here. Yeah. We've got some chilies right there. So it's oh, looking goodness. really good. Look, this is a volunteer oh, radish. Hey. Look how beautiful that is. It's going to be a gorgeous oh, radish. We're not even big radish people, but it's doing really good. Okay, here's the, the rest of the, the fall potatoes coming up. They're doing great. All right, we got the first, the first row of lettuce done. A big helper. Look what? at all these Orbeez. Orbeez. All right, let's get the rest one. All right, you can see it's getting late. <laughs> Got my lights on. Um, we've got most of the plan. I knew you can't see it, and we're gonna give you an update tomorrow. So this video will go until tomorrow. But if you look, look how pretty these little rows of this uh, stuff is. So we got a little bit more to plant. We're not gonna get it planted this evening. So what we'll do is get it planted tomorrow. Misty will probably finish it up in the morning, and then we will give you an update on the cows, the fences over there, and also the. Um, the fields over there. Everything's looking really good over there as well. So love this time of year. Um, well, we went on and got those rows done, uh, finished up. It is dark outside, as you can tell. So we will give you an update on the cows later, also on the pumpkin patch area. Of course, most of our pumpkins are playing out. We we had about probably about 30 or 40 pumpkins out of there this year. So we were we were happy with that. Um, some of our seed didn't come up from the late year before. Some of our organic seed that we bought did not even really make a difference or, or show up I don't, I don't know what the situation was there so those two fields we'll give you a little updates there we'll be doing some videos on it we're actually going to be disking those fields up those will become a wheat field uh, for cover crop uh, for deer also for harvesting for cow and uh, we'll give you some updates on the cows I'm sorry you didn't see them in this video uh, it just got a little too dark so we're going to go ahead and get some updates on it probably in the next video as well I uh, just want to make a mention uh, where we're at now with our fall gardening and with uh, the raised beds as you saw of course those raised beds are the hucoculture beds that we have uh, so we will finish those up by putting some bone meal and some blood meal around uh, in the bed as you can tell uh, if you as of course if you remember on the soul block video we actually fed those with organic fertilizer all across the top when we seeded uh, so they're doing great. The, qu the quality of the ground is so wonderful. We've been feeding that with organic fertilizer and also it had chicken manure and also some cattle manure and some typical compost in those hue culture beds. So those beds are nutrient rich. So I'm not going to feed my starts now. So if you don't have a really nutrient rich uh, bed that you're putting those in, I would challenge you maybe to start feeding some organic feed or to, to, to side dress with maybe some fertilizers or with some manure uh, to kind of really get those in upstart because they're going to probably go through a shocking point look kind of bad you saw some of mine were leggy what it was was they were needing to get planted uh, some of the soil was dry because we wanted to make sure the block stayed good and intact before we put it in there so uh, this this morning we'll go back um, or excuse me, tomorrow morning we'll go back and we'll actually get a good water on them, check them, make sure they're not looking leggy anymore. They'll probably stand right back up and of course we'll give you some updates on that. But we're putting blood meal, we're putting bone meal. Remember those two things, uh, being organic fertilizers, don't tend to uh, start feeding now. So our goal is we want a feeding through the season. 
Lastly, to end this video, uh, we had some footage of HOA. We'll, we'll run through that real quick. Uh, we didn't get a lot of footage because we had a lot of good time with a lot of friends, so we didn't do as much footage as, as a lot of people, but we'll run through that. Um, and then the second part of this video is of Washington. Washington was a great experience for us and for our kids. Um, again, we are homeschoolers, so it allowed the kids to kind of have an educational trip to um, to really see the, the 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 things that need to be seen, such as some of the sacrifices and some of the uh, just awesome memorabilia from uh, the early parts of our country. So we'll show a lot of that too. So we're going to start that video now and conclude this video here. Washington is a sober place for us um, as Christian conservatives and also as uh, homesteaders uh, to be able to kind of grow our own food and for homeschoolers to be able to teach our children the faith and values. Uh, Arlington and see the sacrifice that um, so many men and women made uh, in honor of, you know, 100 years later and 60 and 50 and 40 and 30 years later that we have the freedoms that we do, we don't take lightly here. Um, we, we really teach our children to, to respect and, and to enjoy uh, what we have, which is our freedom, uh, and not take that for granted because it's, it's been fought for and sacrificed and died for. But so, I tell you, if you haven't been to Arlington, it, it is a very sobering, um, sobering thought. Uh, we really enjoyed our trip uh, to see so much. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think, 600 and some odd acres. And, and over 400,000 burials, and some of those are spouses and, and even children of, of the veterans, but to see that many people fight over so many wars just so the USA could have uh, the freedoms we have, you can't take that lightly. So um, I wanted to end this video with a few more clips of, of Arlington. Uh, if you haven't been, I challenge you to go, and uh, really, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful evening. I hope you've enjoyed our videos. Uh, we'll be coming out with more farming videos, but we just wanted to end with this to know uh, or to show y'all that um, we can't have our farm, we can't homeschool, uh, we can have the freedom to go to our church uh, and to serve um, our God without uh, the sacrifice of, of so many. So uh, we wanted to end this video on a, on a little bit more of a sobering thought, and, and we hope that you enjoyed it. Again, um, God bless you, and happy homesteading, y'all.